while the days are lengthening. So we look forward to not just a, a future in the, this world, but a future in the next as well. Mm -hmm. Here are some words from Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. He, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. What a great passage to meditate on, a great passage to come this morning to praise the, the Lord God. Let's sing, O Lord our God, how majestic is your name. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name.
darkened, closed in, we thank you that you are the way, the truth and the life, Lord, that you are the anchor for our souls and that you will uh, bring about a new day, Lord, a new glory. Oh, the you. earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Lord, and is your name, Jesus, the name which is the name above every name. Mm. And Lord, we just want to exalt your name this morning. Well, we want to exalt your name all the time because you are worthy of all praise. From the NIV Bible, Luke chapter 7, beginning at 36. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, Hmm, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he cancelled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose 
the one who had the bigger debt cancelled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. After this, Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herald's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Hello, church. Before we begin to look at the Bible, let's just pray. Thank you, Father, for this time to study your word. And we pray, most of all, Lord, that you'll send your spirit upon us that we might learn from it and mark in it, Lord, what we need to learn. Amen. I don't know if you noticed, but um, the Americans have had a presidential election recently. And the outgoing president, uh, I heard him interviewed and he was asked, by the interviewer what was his favorite part of the Bible and he replied he liked all of it a politician's answer I wonder if you were asked did you have a favorite part of the Bible what you would choose so I've chosen um, to speak today on one of my favorite parts of the Bible which Edna's just read to you which is the story of this woman who came to Jesus when he was at a meal in Simon the leper's house. And uh, I wanted to look at it in three ways. I wanted to look at the woman herself. Then I wanted to look at um, why she loved Jesus so much. And then lastly, what we could learn from her. So the first thing is the woman herself. Well, in contrast to the end of the story where we hear about the women who were serving Jesus, we don't actually know this lady's name. But a similar story, although they're not necessarily all the same, can be found in all of the Gospels of a woman anointing Jesus. But it's not necessarily the same woman, and in one of the Gospels we know which woman anointed Jesus. But here we have this woman. And she approaches Jesus as he's at a meal in Simon the leper's house. And she begins to wash and anoint his feet. Now, the first thing I want to mention about her was that although we don't know her name, we do know about her and so did the others at the meal. Because Simon felt that if Jesus was a prophet, then he wouldn't really approve of the lady who was showing him this attention. Now, although she was showing him attention, she wasn't the centre of attention because I, I thought to myself, if I was at that meal and a lady came in and started to do these things and I could see her, um, I'd feel a bit uncomfortable about her uh, kissing Jesus' feet and everything. It's, it's a bit like, I don't feel entirely comfortable now when I see people who propose marriage to someone on the television. I just feel somehow I shouldn't be there. And that it's a personal moment that really I shouldn't be part of. 
And I thought maybe I'd feel the same way if I'd been at that meal. But in fact, it wasn't quite like that because the way that they ate in those days was that they would lie down and they would all have their um, heads together around the food and just reach out and eat the food. But their legs as such would be like the spokes of a wheel. They'd all be outward facing. And in fact, this lady could come and have access to Jesus' feet without really being very noticed. And in fact, what we learn about her is that she was a lady who even today would be considered to be on the outside of things, on the fringes of society. And she came to Jesus at this meal. Now, the next question is, why did this outsider so love Jesus? Jesus actually, in his response to the woman, said to her that she showed him much love. He really appreciated that she really did love him. So why was she so um, extravagantly loving towards him? Well, she must have already experienced something of Jesus. First of all, she knew who he was and she knew he was going to be there and she wanted to come and she wanted to come and anoint him. So she obviously, he had done something for her already. We know that she must have recognised that she was a sinner because she wept and often tears of repentance are a sign that someone has been convicted that they are sinners. And not only that, but she also kissed his feet repeatedly like she was worshipping him really. And then she brought an expensive ointment to anoint him with. And so in a sense she was serving him. So it, it does look like there was some relationship there and it boiled down to the fact that she realised she was a sinner and he was a man who could do something about that. And that's illustrated in the story that Jesus speaks to Simon. Isn't it interesting that Jesus knew what Simon was thinking about this woman and the attention she was paying to him? Jesus knows all our thoughts. Simon didn't have to speak out and say to Jesus what he was thinking. Jesus knew already. And he uses a story, and this is the first time actually in Luke's Gospel that he begins to tell a story, a parable, to illustrate something. And so he tells the story of this debt that's owed by two people, one who owes a huge debt and one who owes a small debt. But it doesn't really matter because neither of them can pay. And the person to whom they owe the debts forgives the debts. And who would be the most grateful? And Simon gets the story he gets the fact that this woman, in doing what she's doing, is showing something that she realises that her great sins have been forgiven. I'm not sure about Simon, whether he really fits the bill for someone who uh, realises that they don't have many sins. I'm not sure he really understands who Jesus is. He's not sure if he's a prophet, and he doesn't seem to feel, like the other Pharisees, that Jesus is able to forgive sins. So he doesn't really recognise that Jesus is God. But that's not the case for the woman. And what can we learn about this great love that she showed towards Jesus? Well, the first thing I understand, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I've read that the word that Jesus uses when he says how much she has shown her love is actually a Hebrew word which means gratitude. And so she's actually showing great gratitude to Jesus in the way that she acts towards him. And how can we learn how we can be grateful for Jesus? First of all, the thing that I notice about the woman is that she doesn't have to be sent to a stage. All she needs is Jesus' affirmation. That she, and we could learn from that as well, and also the fact that she's a woman and Jesus accepts her ministry to him. I think that's very important just how Jesus elevated women and made them important. Um, so I released, recently read in, in a, a MAF magazine, MAF is the Missionary Aviation Fellowship. We've had someone who came and spoke at our church about that and I've started to get the magazine from them and it's very interesting. And one of the things that I was reading about was a uh, 
about a, a, a place in southern Sudan where they've had a lot of conflict and a bishop there is setting up a multi-faith community actually but it's going to be a peaceful place and they need lots of resources and it's in a remote place and um, Missionary Aviation Fellowship is run by Christians and they bring resources to all sorts of people not just Christians um, in outlying places and very remote places but the one thing they need is an airstrip without an airstrip the planes can't land and they can't bring the resources that are needed so this bishop was setting up this community a peaceful community and he needed resources and he needed an airstrip and what he said was about the airstrip the women mostly built it because they're the best and I think Jesus realized that and so here is this woman and what do we know about what sort of service Jesus wanted him so we want to serve him like her out of a sense of gratitude but what what can we serve him with well I just looked at the woman and thought well she served him with herself her tears washed his unwashed feet her hair was used as a towel to dry his feet her lips kissed him to show affection for him and she used her resources to buy the, anoint, the, the expensive ointment to anoint him for his mission to be our saviour. She realised exactly what he wanted to do. And that's what we can learn from her. Jesus doesn't want us to bring our great talents to him. He just wants us to bring ourselves. That's what she brought, just herself. And we can also learn from her that if we have great gratitude to Jesus for what he has done for us then we can give of our resources to support his ministry the women in the, in the chapter 8 of, of Luke who are mentioned straight after this woman offering herself really they offered themselves and, and their resources to support Jesus in his ministry as he traveled around and we can similarly offer ourselves but also offer all that we have all our resources like the widow's might we can offer it to Jesus and support we, we perhaps can't be uh, frontline missionaries or evangelists but we can support those who are, who are doing that work for Jesus and we can give of our resources just as she did and just as they did and so my prayer is that we will know like her the affirmation of Jesus as we offer him ourselves in worship to him he doesn't want anything else just us as we are sinners as we are and surely we should be as grateful as her because we all know that our sins are great and his love is greater and so we need to come to him and offer ourselves and offer our resources and further his kingdom this kingdom of love for the outsider, for those who are not interested, people who are not, the society is not interested in, who have discounted, who are the lowest of the low, these are the ones who Jesus wants us to go to and to use our resources to reach out to them and to be able to say to them, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Mm -hmm.
bringing justice and forgiveness. God, we cry to you, revive us. Heal our nation. Heal our nation. Heal our nation.
the Lord is my shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in the meadow grass and leads me beside the quiet streams he gives me new strength he helps me do what honors him the most even when walking through the valley of death I will not be afraid for you are close beside me guarding guiding all the way you provide delicious food for me in the presence of my enemies. You have welcomed me as your guest. Blessings overflow. Your goodness and unfailing kindness will be with me all of my life. And afterwards, I will live with you forever in your home. Dear Lord, we thank you for these blessings, these words that bring comfort at a time of many of mourning. Lord, we pray for the poor in spirit at this time across the world across the pandemic we ask for the leaders to have wisdom in all the decisions that they need to make in this village lord we pray for all of us who are in lockdown we pray for your comfort your wisdom and your peace in this church community lord we pray for your protection, your hands to be upon each one of us as we work our way through this situation. We pray for those involved in the vaccinations and we thank you, Lord, for the scientists that have been involved in the development of the vaccinations so far. We pray for everyone, everyone who's opening the doors, everyone who's giving the vaccinations, and we pray for um, joy once we are able to walk away from this pandemic. We pray for the NHS, Lord, 
and all of those in prisons. We pray for our schools and all of those who are standing in as teachers, who are homeschooling. We pray for the children and we pray for all of those who are delivering the homeschooling. We pray for all of those who are having to shield. Thank you, Lord, for the volunteers in this village, in this county, in this country, and all of those who've been involved in delivering food and medication to those in need. Lord, we pray for our relationships with each other as we are more concentrated with each other. Lord, we thank you. Your goodness and unfailing kindness will be with me all of my life. And afterwards, I will live with you forever in your home. Lord, we thank you for this promise. We thank you for the surety of this, knowing this. In Jesus' name, amen.